Hi guys, in today's episode, we're talking about Jordan Ridley, the 504k defender from Essendon. Jordan Ridley, a couple of years ago, it really felt like he broke out. Is he the breakout candidate again for this year? Big J, I think it's very hard for someone who's already broken out once to to break out again. I think it's more so recapturing that form that mm. led to them rising so much. And Ridley really was one of those players that just really rose out of the clouds. Um, no one saw it coming. And it was awesome to watch as an Essendon supporter. So clean, beautiful intercept marker, great decision maker. His kicking high you know, efficiency. It was a joy to watch and a joy to have when he was going one thirties every week, it, it was he was the chosen one in the back line, and unfortunately had to get concussed. Uh, I think this guy really is capable of, of taking his game up to another level and recapturing some of that form from a couple of years ago. I do believe so. Mm. Well, that's kind of what super coaches want, right? At a, at a five hundred k mark, you're not paying for a player to be a, a stepping stone. You're not really paying for them to make money anymore, unless it's like. Patrick Cripps at 500k and you think he can get to 650. Um, you're really kind of paying for a keeper in your team that you can have for the rest of the year. Yes, that is correct. Uh, you know, 504k, 300, priced at 91. So mm -hmm. obviously you'd, you'd want more than that if you want them to be, you know, a primo keeper for the year. You know, he averaged 101 in 2020, not, you know, 2021, he averaged 98. And then last year's average 91. So you're looking at this, you know, each year on year, it's going down. I'm like, what's going on? This is mm. this is not someone who's entering their prime at 24 years old. But it really, I think, though, this year is going to be different. His role is best suited to be an intercept defender. That, that's part of the reason why Aaron Francis is no longer at the team anymore. He lost his spot mm. to Ridley. And Ridley is someone who, unfortunately, due to how short we were, we were in the back line last year, uh, too often he had to play a one-on-one -on -one key position defense role uh, and had to be really accountable um, for his for his man. So I think this year under Scott, we're going to be a lot more defensively minded. The midfield isn't going to allow a whole bunch of, you know, easy entries unimpeded inside 50. I think we're going to see a lot more intercepting from Ridley to, to really raise that average again. Yeah. Well, last year, you know, last year he did have nine scores over 100, which which is great for those owners that did have him. I know there were a few people that had started him off that big year, the year before in 2021. Um, obviously got burnt a little bit and had to sideways and trade him out. But, you know, if those, nine, if those 900 scores were at the start of the season, you'd be pretty happy. Um, he seems to be the number one kick taker, so number one taker from when they have behinds, which is really impressive there as well. I know he's kind of got a big booming kick um and he seems pretty accurate as well with with that um he has a tendency though to kick to the ends he, he won't generally kick down the middle so maybe there's a little bit of a improvement to be had there um he's still only 24 which is fantastic for for him and his development you know he's not a 30 year old or 35 year old Shannon Hearn who you can't really teach to do new things um and as you say you know his position itself seems to be a little bit locked in which is fantastic for us. You know, you don't want to have a guy going into a new role or someone, you know, moving from the back line to the forward line or vice versa as well. Yeah, he's always been one of our best defenders, best players in the back line. And even now that still hasn't changed. He's well and truly locked in as part of those, that the key six pillars in that back line under Scott now. Uh, and he's been really performing quite well. Uh, we have had some people, um, I suppose, out with injury over this preseason, especially in the forward line. But he's, you know, it looks like he's well and truly back to that Ridley of old. He's still taking kick-ins. Uh, and the way we're going to play our, our game this year, according you know, to some reports, uh, being that we're going to play some, we're going to be happy to switch the play up, uh, you know, switch the ball from one end of the ground to the other. And him being such a great kicker, uh, I see us really using him as one of those facilitating kicks. Uh, you know, he, that's probably the biggest reason why for him, he's struggled with his scoring in the past, being a key position player. But if we're going to be able to play defensively, uh, Brendan, Brandon Sirk Thatcher is really, really growing as a key def, key position player. 
and mm -hmm. he's really taken his game to another level, he will be the key one-on-one -on -one target now, uh, and that should free up Ridley to play that intercepting role, which he's been doing so far this preseason. Um, a lot of people are talking about Mason Redman also as a potential player uh, in their team, and him and him and Redman, it, it's an interesting relationship how they both go together. Uh, they do share kick-ins, but of course Ridley is the, the primary kick-in taker, which sort of gives him you know a higher floor than others. Uh, and if Mason Redman is going to be up the ground a bit more, kicking the ball forward as opposed to being the facilitator off half back, you could end up with more kick-ins for for Ridley. So I think there is you know another step up to his scoring. Mm. I guess the only real problem I've got kind of with picking Ridley is obviously. He's not a proven guy. He, he's done his massive scores once and then regressed a little bit last year. One of the things as well is that 2021, you guys, in, in the trade period, got Jake Kelly in. Um, he was supposed to be the player that was supposed to open up Ridley to really come in and, and do the role and be the main key interceptor. And we actually saw his scoring kind of regress a little bit. Um, now BZT's come in and he's doing uh, supposed to be doing a similar thing. Um, Massimo's come in and now he's kind of doing a bit of that push off half back and things like that as well. So how can we kind of be trusting that Ridley's really going to be that guy and, and really kind of be the player that he was two years ago when now his back line's even more stacked? Mm. Yeah, that's definitely a very valid concern. Uh, Kelly, though, yes, a lot of discussion of him trying to free up Ridley, but I think Kelly's still just a bit too small. He wasn't able to to play on those really big players that Ridley, Ridley's just taller than him. So he had to play, you know, and uh, a key position. Uh, and BZT hadn't really, uh, I suppose, taken that next step in his in his game. He seems mm -hmm. still to be a bit behind. Uh, it was really only last year, mid middle to late last year, where BZT really just suddenly came back and was playing really well as a key position player. So yes, uh, there was still some concern there whether or not Kelly would be able to, to free him up. And as we saw, that didn't happen at all. Uh, Massimo, as great as he is, as much as I love him, I think Scott is still trying to make him earn his pick. I think there are six players in the back line definitely locked in ahead of he is. I think he's going to have a bit more time playing in the VFL or playing on a wing, could even push up forward. He has had sessions where he was playing against a small defender um and that w he, he's regularly matched up against uh, the likes of you know uh Pidge McGrath so it's it seems like he's also being groomed to maybe play a bit half forward as well as a small forward um as depth you know Tip and Woody still not 100% fit um uh, none of the, none of our indigenous boys I don't think are going to be ready to go and run one so Massimo could be playing forward uh I still think there is this. Yes, there are a few chefs in the kitchen, so to speak. But in terms of the ball users out of the back line, and, and in addition to kick-ins, I think Ridley is still the number one, followed closely by Redmond. Do you think someone like a Montgomery, who you guys picked up in the rookie draft, that might he might be the one that comes in, and you know teams like um, Geelong that play two key forwards. Do you think yeah. him and and BZT might be the ones that stop? like the key forwards and allows Ridley to kind of roam that way? Absolutely, 100%. Uh, Rhett Montgomery, he's an interesting one because he's not the biggest He's not the biggest physically, but he has great athleticism and he's mm -hmm. able to play a bit like Jeremy Howe is how he's able to play, you know, taller than he actually is because he has a great leap. Rhett Montgomery is in that same, I suppose, that same mould of someone who's a bit smaller, not not you know, large enough to be a key position player, but due to athleticism is still able to break even in contests. And he's not going to be a distributor. He's very much uh, a negating player. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, his, his, his disposal isn't the best. Same thing with BZT. His disposal isn't the best either. So they're going to be focused on killing the ball and getting the ball to the likes of Ridley, who's able to, you know, to lace the ball beautifully in uh, about 25 metres away. If you want a more penetrating kick, they'd give it to, to, to Redman. But I think Redmond is going to be someone who's going to probably be better suited kicking the ball up the ground as opposed to across. So I think Ridley will get a lot more supply from these guys, 100%. Nice. Well, I guess the real question is, Joe, um, is he in your team? Is he in contention? How are you feeling about starting him this year? He's definitely in contention. I don't have him right now in my team. I'm still 
waiting in uh, to look at how the preseason games go. He's definitely one of those players that I'm watching keenly. Currently, I've got, you know, there's still so many of these players around that 500k mark in the back line. That's really hard to to really split them. You've got your Daycost, your Youngs, your Ridleys, Red Reds, and then you've got a slightly a bit more in your Brayshaw and Saad. It's so hard to to nail these picks. Uh, he's definitely in contention for me. What about you? You considering him? Um, not really so much. Like you said, there's a few players at the moment who are kind of higher. I think the defense is very much set in. You pick the 600k guys, or you pick you know, the best one or two of the 500K, plus like a yo, that kind of thing. And Ridley, for me, he's an upgrade target, but he's not kind of in that level. Um, there's still a lot of unknowns and things like that. So watch and see, and, you know, you can always pay for him later. Yep, fair enough. All right, that was our discussion, guys, about Jordan Ridley, a guy very close to my heart. Absolutely love him. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you can be made aware of all of the videos that we're pumping out, and there will be many of them. Don't you worry. It's only going to ramp up even more. Preseason games around the corner, Big J. Yeah, mate. Can't wait. Preseason. I think a lot of clubs have actually got intra clubs coming up in the next couple of weeks, so might even get some televised footage there. Remember, guys, um, we've got our Super Coach group as well where you can join up. It's free. I'll put the information down in the description. Join up for free. You can win some amazing prizes from that. And we love the support you guys have been giving us so far. Yeah, feel free also to, you know, at, at bounce, at bounce underscore center, uh, feel free to tag us uh, and send us a screenshot of your team. We might, you know, you might feature on one of our videos on a on a Rate My Team. So, guys, feel free if you want to tap into some of our knowledge and uh, get a better sense of where you're at. Yeah, definitely. Remember, guys, we do the hard work so you don't have to. Bye for now.